And welcome back to the special edition of Hannity, the crisis in Syria and the decision of what to do there could end up being the most important moment of President Obama's second term. But how's he handling it? Well, let's see what Frank Luntz's bipartisan focus group thinks about the commander in chief. The president's speech continues to elicit divided opinion across America. When he talked about his role as commander in chief, we saw that division right here with our voters. Let's take a look at how they dialed that clip. This is not a world we should accept. This is what's at stake. And that is why, after careful deliberation, I determined that it is in the national security interests of the United States to respond to the Assad regime's use of chemical weapons through a targeted military strike. The purpose of this strike would be to deter Assad from using chemical weapons, to degrade his regime's ability to use them, and to make clear to the world that we will not tolerate their use. That's my judgment as Commander-in-Chief. He was very clear about his role as Commander-in-Chief. So tell me, as an average American, how would you, and you voted for him, how would you describe in a word or phrase Barack Obama as Commander-in-Chief? Right now, weak. Indecisive. I'd say he was effective. Embarrassing. I'd say average. Mill road to average to better. He's demonstrated restraint and leadership. Tempered with caution. No leadership, vacillating and weak. I'm going to start with your reaction. Why? That's pretty positive compared to how the rest of the group has responded. Tell me why. Well, he, he has d demonstrated a lot of restraint over the past couple of years and a lot of leadership. He's engaging Congress, so he, I think he's done a terrific job under the circumstances. Your reaction? Embarrassing. Why? It was once a time when America was the leader of the world, and when our president spoke, he had people behind him to follow. There's, there's the issue. You know, exercising restraints is fine, except from the start. A year ago, he started talking about a red line that he drew. He hasn't backed away from it, and now that the time has come to act, he's not acting. But it was clear when he put that red line down, he never put a plan in place to back it up. And when it was crossed, now he's scrambling. That is not a commander-in-chief. That's not a forward strategic thinker. Go ahead. One of the problems is that the president governs by committee instead of making decisions. I think he's being sensitive to the American people. I mean, he was very clear that he wanted to use airstrikes, and I, I was actually a bit committed or a bit convinced for a while during the speech that, that that's what we were going to do. First of all, I want to say it's a little bit ironic that he got the Nobel Peace Prize, and now he's sitting there talking about bombing uh, people. I don't but think the second thing is that there's a red line. He says if it's crossed, and it was crossed, what, two, three times now? And then he does nothing until the third time, and then he pushes it on Congress. It's embarrassing. It's in Restraint and diplomacy do take strength, and it's hard for a lot of our population to recognize that. But more importantly, there have been many times in the history of this country where there's been civil unrest, uh, like civil war between countries, and we've rushed in and not understood all the issues at stake. My and thing. so all the things that people are saying he's vacillating is where he was trying to understand the situation. Now he's determined to deal with the human rights issues. My thing is, and I'm going to address your point, if he was so, if you, you say he was so strong on a strike, then why didn't he strike? You know, oh, that speech made him look he, weak. He, he told us that Syrians shot off six rockets, and then there's evidence that chemical weapons were dispersed. Now what is to tell us if he strikes, chemical are not going to be dispersed from our strikes. I think it was really clear that he wanted to garner support. Clear. Of, but of when Congress. has he ever been clear? He does not need Congress's uh, permission to go Just in and Just because he and tells strike. us he's going to be clear and, doesn't make him clear. And But he was doing, I, I feel like Congress sort of stomped their feet like there little children. Like it's all, we want to say in this. And instead, and political. so what he did was he kind of threw them a bone. He didn't have to. And now but he wants he, to throw them uh, tomahawks. But he said, <laughs> and, and I, he is trying to get, he did say, the support of Congress makes it for a more unified front. And yeah, he I went believe for that. that support when he uh, attacked Libya, but that's too, what I would he? say. Now the more liberals are being like war hawks and the more conservatives are restraining themselves what? and not wanting to go in. <laughs> I don't understand why left of center is now calling for military action yes. and right of center is saying we're not the world's police. It's very interesting. I, it's I, wonderful. I, I feel like the drugs I took in college just kicked in. <laughs> <laughs>
as a registered independent, it's very exciting for me. I love what I'm watching, but I think the element of surprise is over. As Commander in Chief, I think we got what we elected, uh, somebody who's idealistic, that doesn't have leadership capabilities, doesn't have managerial capabilities, and this is what we're seeing. When somebody gets pushed out by the and suits we can't beyond fault him. We can't fault him for going to Congress and asking for support. I think it sets a good stage for his predecessor. It sets a good stage to be able to have Congress and the President work hand in hand. He's right about that. Why is this one the one time he wants to walk to Congress? Congress no, passes. No, no, let me, let me give you an example. Different things. Let me He's, give you an example. Congress turns down Clean Air Act, and what happens? He does it by executive order, mm -hmm. and somehow that's the will of the people. You're absolutely the will of the right. people said He's, no, and he went and did it anyway. No, well, I, I, like, I, I, like it or not, like it or not, we are the world's policemen, and he's the leader of the world's policeman country, the only superpower left, the United States, and he vacillates on everything. He's no leader. The he needs problem to get out is, front. if he believes that he has the power to do this without Congress, then he should have done it, and then. Yes. If, and then if he yeah, believes that, that Congress that. does have to do it, he shouldn't have said anything and then went to Congress. Wait a minute. I don't, You're saying he should have ignored Congress. If he truly believes, and some people do, that he has the unilateral right to go and bomb some other country without the approval of Congress, then he probably should have done it rather than make the comment first, then going back. He doesn't want to take responsibility. That's ahead. leadership. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I want a collective opinion. I want to get everybody's feedback into this decision that involves lives that we're going to put on the line for this country. And our lives. I mean, the American, yeah. He, and he the didn't, the president didn't, the president didn't vacillate with Osama bin Laden. He was criticized roundly for threatening to go after uh, Obama in Pakistan. And he did that, and it, which demonstrated a lot of. Uh, you voted for Obama, and you've been one of the most critical people of him. I, I don't. Critical, I, and I am disappointed. However, I do see that he's in a tough spot. Uh, he's trying to 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 make it work. I mean, obviously, we're not all going to hug it out, but um, some of these processes and the steps in order to uh, get advisors, people that uh, are going to be on the committee. To voice and share their opinion, share data and whatever it is. Right. No, I, I hear you. I, it, it is frustrating. I, I mean, I, I'm the first yeah, one to say we're playing it's word games right now. The president wants limited airstrikes. What he wants is the permission to do an act of war. What, we need to stop kidding ourselves. Syria has treaties with other countries, and those are the ones we should actually be thinking about right now. Now, I want the American people to know that this is actually reflective of the country. Fifteen of you voted for Barack Obama, only 11 of you voted for Mitt Romney. But the numbers here, the people who are opposed to it, are very similar to the numbers that we see in the polling data almost every day. And the division that you all reflect in this room are the divisions that we see in America every day.